Well, if you like pawn shops or you just like great television, you know the man sitting in front of me. His name is Les Gold. He's one of the stars of the show Hardcore Pawn, which is shot in Detroit. And you just shot your 94th episode for True TV. It's amazing. Uh, who would have ever thought we'd be on for so long? Uh, 94 shows, it's a milestone, almost the milestone I'm looking for. I'm looking for show 100. We'll get it shortly. What have we got? Um, a couple of antiques from the 1950s. OK. They're from old diners. He dispensed the napkins, of course, and also fortunes. You put a penny in, and you push this down, and your fortune would come out. It's fascinating to me because you actually started out as just a store in Detroit. This was a family business. Well, we didn't just start out as a store. That's what we do. Okay. Um, we just, we're pawnbrokers that happen to be on TV. Um, the uniqueness of our situation is the American Jewelry and Loan business. We're a pawn shop. We deal with a thousand people that come in to borrow money every day, and that's what drew attention to, to our store. And this is a family business, as I said. It's your mother's father that started this business? Well, my grandfather started Sam's Loan Office okay. in the 1940s. Uh, 1978, I opened up American Jewelry and Loan, my wife and I. Um, so it's a family business now with our children involved. Okay. And, but you didn't know the TV business, but you knew the pawn business. How did you get into TV? Well, what happened was we have a very unique situation. Um, dealing with a thousand people that come in for loans, 500 people that come in to pick up their merchandise, and a couple hundred sprinkled in to buy stuff from us, pr produced people to come visit. And a production company was in Detroit, wanted to stop by, and they looked at the situation of all my customers. They saw that we have 40,000 items in the back, so there's 40,000 stories. And I, have a, and I have a very unique family with me, yeah, Ashley, and Seth. So, you know, family dynamics, 40,000 stories makes good TV. And you saw Ashley and Seth because they're in the family business. They both, one of them went to Michigan State, one of them went to University of Michigan. Did you always think that they would follow in your footsteps? I knew Ashley would. So, you know, Seth went to medical school because coming to American Jewelry and Loan, uh, Christmas time when he had to work, was like going to the dentist and having your tooth pulled without <laughs> Novocaine. So he absolutely hated it. And once he was at Michigan for a couple years, he realized that he was in pre-med. He didn't like blood. And so he called up my wife, Lily, and said, you know, Mom, I think I want to go in the family business. And we both go, what family business is that? And he, we made him graduate at U of M, which he did, uh, with flying colors. And he came into the business, and now I have the next generation of pawnbrokers. I'm very excited. And what's great about your show is that you actually do connect with with the audience, with the family dramas. And you and your son have sometimes tension and disagreements over how things should be marketed, decisions that were made about how much money to give, um, for, to give for some of these items. Is that part of the appeal of the show? Well, family dynamics is appealing to everybody because everybody can relate to family issues. Um, the difference between us and just a regular family is we're running a business. We're running a huge business. And of course, my way is the right way, but I just can't convince Seth and Ashley of that. All of a sudden, I hear my dad negotiating for some. I don't even know what the hell they are. It looks like a piece of that we're never going to be able to sell. I'm sure we're going to make a good profit on it. How do you know? The ornateness of it. It, there was one part where he actually said that your idea of marketing is taking out an ad in the yellow pages. So you have this, uh, this generation that came behind you, your kids. What have you learned from them? I've learned the internet. I've learned that, you know, I, I've allowed Seth to open up a website which involves our store uh, at pawndetroit.com. And you can look at stuff and I can sell merchandise outside of the brick and mortar that I'm used to. You know, brick and mortar is the bread and butter that, I, that I've always known. But Seth is bringing, after 10 years of being in the business, he's bringing in new technology that I'm really not used to. And it's hard for me to change. If he can show me profit, I can change. And so you've actually trained him, though. You said 10 years in the business. How do you train someone to become good at the pawn business? Watching me. You know, I'm really good at what I do. Um, I know how to do customer service. I know how to deal with customers. I know a little bit about a lot of stuff. And the only way that Seth will and Ashley will both learn the business is by being able to and, al and me allowing them to look at merchandise, pricing merchandise. The problem with these is to get them repaired like this when it's a fortune. More than 80 bucks, I wouldn't be interested. 
For both of them? For both of them. Can I get $100 a piece? 80 bucks is very fair. All right, I'll do it. Got it. 80 bucks. Thanks okay. a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. My theory in business is you have to make mistakes. Because if you don't make mistakes, you never learn. You always think your way's the right way, but if you learn, if you learn how to right a wrong, or right a mistake that you've made, that's where the that's where the real knowledge comes into play. You know, coming into work and, and then walking into our business, that's a really huge business. We're very lucky to have such a big business. Would be very easy for them. What I want them to do is make the mistakes. I didn't get here by not making mistakes. I tell them I haven't made many, but I make mistakes. And in, in business and in any type of business, you have to make mistakes to learn how to deal with them. It's really a tough business because the art of negotiation is in plain view. And I, I remember on one of the episodes, these guys brought in an uh, a old switchboard. And, and you were like, I'll give you X amount of dollars. And they said, we need a little more than that. And you went back and forth. And finally, these guys were about to leave. And you said, OK. I'll give you this. this. This is an art, right? It is. Negotiating, you know, being a professional salesperson is one thing, but buying and selling is a whole different story. And the whole psychology of it's that. A, it's a psychology. Um, it's business. It's business. To me, it's business 101. Have, the, have, your, have an item come in. You're trying to negotiate the best price for the store. You don't deal with emotion. You know, so when somebody comes in, I'm not dealing with emotion. When I'm selling an item, you try as a professional salesman to bring that emotion out from the customer. And that's the hardest thing to train my employees, my children is, take the emotion out of it when you're buying it, bring in the emotion when you're selling it. Hmm, interesting. So uh, how do you, with a competitive business like this, do you have regrets? Do you have items that you're like, oh my goodness, I let that go. That could have been a pretty penny. We deal with a thousand items. You're going to lose some. You know, whether I go up that extra 10%, whether I go up that extra $5, is a judgment call that I have to make. That's, that's the hardest part of being a pawnbroker. Did you make the right call? Did you not make the right call? And as you watch the show, on, you know, that's on every Tuesday, you'll, you'll see me negotiate. you see my employees negotiate. Then when push comes to shove, they call in the best negotiator, me. How do you know the value of these items? I mean, you've been in the business for a long time, but at some point, you have to be doing research and figuring out. How do you do that? Seth does it. Um, I have employees that go to the internet. You know, one of the best tools is the internet. You can find out a lot of things about merchandise, but we're pawnbrokers. You know, we deal with people that are in need of money. We deal with people that want to buy merchandise less expensive than they, than they can buy on the internet, that they can buy at this shop next door. So we're very competitive. Um, we do our homework. We can't let our homework take too much time because you can't spend very, a, a lot of time taking care of one customer. You have 100 more in line. So if you watch the show, all our deals are quick, you know, a couple minutes, five minutes at the longest. I am kind of fell on hard times last year and lost my house. And, oh, I'm sorry uh, to sorry. hear that. And I'm looking to get as much as I can for it, trying to get a place to live. So why don't we test it to see if it even works? Test it. So you need to unlock it? That's probably not. And a lot of things have happened uh, since your family got into this business. The internet came along, as you mentioned. You got eBay. You have all of these different channels uh, that people are selling things on. Uh, what, how has the business changed since you started, and what is the threat, possible threat to the pawn industry? Well, the pawn industry is strong. Uh, the pawn industry has been in business, businesses for 3,000 years. Went from China to went to Italy 300 years ago, the Medici's, the, Rosen, the Rosenthal's. They, they all brought it to, to light. Uh, now we've brought, because of the show, Hardcore Pawn, we have brought it to the world. We're huge in Australia, we're huge in the UK, and so as long as we can stay a step ahead and people now know how cool it is to come to the pawn shop. You know, in the old days, pawn shops were frowned down upon. Mm. We had, you know, people thought of us as uh, drug dealers and, and things that were stolen, and that uh, was our normal customer. Now, because of the TV show, they realize that it's, we're in the forefront. You want a great deal when the economy went bad, the people that were making a lot of money realized they couldn't, 
go to the mall store. They couldn't go to the jewelry store, the, the high-end jewelry stores. Where are you going to go? They're coming to the pawn shop. So we've seen a tremendous increase in business because of the TV show. And because you have this TV show, you have this great platform. What are the other revenue streams uh, besides the show and the actual uh, store? We sell T-shirts. Um, you know, so people come in because Detroit, I've dealt with the Mayor Bing and, and Chief Godby, the police chief. And you know, they're happy that we're bringing people yeah, okay. into the city. So people come in now that we would never have had come in the store before. You know, people go on trips, they, they go four hours out of their way just to see us. So that's increased our business because they have to buy something. You know, they want to meet me and what, they, what people don't understand is that we're there. What's great about you though is you're not just your typical person that hosts the show. You get out there and you actively promote the show. You're paying attention to the ratings because you want this show to succeed. Uh, have you gotten more sophisticated with the TV business or what's happening there? Well, I get it now. Um, where, you know, I, I'm a pawnbroker that just happens to be on TV, but I'm kind of understanding the dynamics of TV. You know, uh, Turner Broadcasting brought us in to do all these interviews and Good Afternoon America and Good Morning America and all these things that I would never have expected a pawnbroker from Detroit to be on. And I get it. I get what the, what the viewer wants. And I want eyeballs. And it's only a self benefiting prophecy for me. You know, I don't make any more money. I don't get anything extra once we get a hundred shows. But I just know every morning that I wake up and I go, how bad do I want it? I lift weights every day to keep in shape. My mind is in shape and, and I want it just as bad today as I did when I was young. But one of the things I, I like to say on this show is that fame pays if you have a business model. So you have a business model. You have fame. There are lots of other things you could do. You could write books. You could uh, probably have other shows that you decide uh, to develop. Do you see any of that happening? Well, as a matter of fact, since you brought up a book, I just <laughs> signed a book deal. Okay. Um, which will be coming out next spring. Uh, I don't even know the name of the book yet, but we're going to begin writing it in the next few weeks. But you get a bigger advance because you have a bigger name. Well, there was another uh, person in the same industry as ours that had written a book that didn't do very well. So that was probably an issue that why I didn't get a fame, uh, a big uh, oh, I see. Okay. startup fee. Um, and you mentioned you're not the only show on television that's dealing with Pawn. You have the show Pawn Stars. Some people try to say that you copy that show. Uh, how do you feel about that? Have you watched our show? I've watched there, your show. There is no competition. We are the real deal of Pawn Shop shows. There is no question. You know, here's how, we, here's how the show works. We're, our hours are from 9.30 to 6, six days a week. I work 9.30 to 6, six days a week. I put on my white sweater, because normally at work I don't wear that white sweater, but you, for TV, you need continuity. So I put on my white sweater, they put a microphone on me, they have, we have three cameras and a whole production facility, and that's real pawn shop. And it, it's real. It's real. But you take the best examples that you have to offer uh, to put on that show, right? Not necessarily. You see some bad examples that we offer. So, the, you know, it's, it's all about the, the production company, you know, and, and True TV. Uh, they're the ones that put the show together. I'm not an actor. I'm a pawnbroker. And th the way it works is I don't want to know what's coming in. I don't want to know what's happening. The, the reality of our show is the reality of our face, our actions and our reactions. When people come in with items, do they know that they're going to be on, potentially be on the show? Well, what do we do? They, they have to inform people that when they walk in, there's cameras in there. You know, their likeness can be used. And, and so, you know, sometimes they come in with stuff all day long and they're just having to be on film and the ones that are the coolest things and the coolest items are the best negotiating but we do that all the time. But you don't have to go back and get their permission to put it on the show or anything? Well they, like they have to sign a release. Okay. You know there's no question about that. Uh, so that's done by the production company. I don't want to know, listen, I'm there to work. That's what I do. That's what's the draw for the show on True. That's what's happening. So that's, that's what I do every day. Part of it really is about your presentation. I mean, you have to have thought about, okay, what are we going to do to make this entertaining, an entertaining exchange between me and my guests? I'm, I'm a pawnbroker. I'm a really, really good pawnbroker. I have a big personality. That's what drew them to the show. You know, Ashley and Seth, Ashley's kind of like me. Seth is, you know, if he could stay in the back room all day, that's what he would like to do, doing his internet stuff and, and working in the back. But I'm a guy that likes to be on the floor. I'm a guy that likes to deal with people. 
I can look you in the eye. I know if I'm going to make the sale, if I'm going to make the buy. There's no question about it. So I'm a big character. There's another family on reality TV that has done really good, the, the Kardashians. Mm. One of the things that people criticize them about is saying, what do they really do? All they have is a reality show. And they fire back and say, it's really hard work. It's really hard work. It's really hard work. Is it hard work to do a reality show? It's hard work. It's tiring work. Because you don't have a chance for downtime. Like I said earlier, 9.30 to 6, I put on my wet sweater, I put on my brown jacket, they put a microphone on me, and I'm working. So I'm doing, I never have downtime. So that's the issue. It's, it's not as easy as it looks on TV. It's not for everybody, and it's not for the faint of heart. How do you continue to bring this to another 100 seasons? Simple. 40,000 items, 40,000 stories. True TV, Hardcore Pawn, has brought real stories to people. We're not buying a Gatling gun for $50,000. We're, we're taking in a 40-inch television for 100 bucks. We're taking in a watch for $20. It's more about the story. It's not about the items. Uh, and you've done a lot for True TV. It's not just your show, but Operation Repo. Uh, you can actually watch that channel all day. Uh, what do you think about the decisions that they made uh, in terms of content to actually take themselves to that next level? Reality TV is what's coming. It's, it's less expensive to produce uh, versus the shows that have the big actors. We're not actors. We're just regular people that do TV. And I think that that's the draw for True, for Turner Broadcasting and all their stuff now. Reality TV is the way it's it, of the future. What, uh, how has this affected uh, your life? You're obviously a famous guy now. Uh, people recognize you. What's the downside of fame? That's the downside. The downside is we were walking on Times Square the other day. I just said to my wife after dinner, let's go walking. And I was outside of one of the stores smoking a cigar. And she went inside, and I must have taken 30 pictures. You know, oh, my God, you're Les from Hardcore Pawn. Oh, my God, we love watching you every Tuesday night. You know, it's, it's one of those things. And because we're such a huge hit in Australia, like I said earlier, and all over the world, so all these people visiting New York recognize me, and they all want to take a picture. And, you know, they thank me for being so you know, cordial with them because I guess famous people don't always do that. You know, let's take pictures. It's because if, if I can't get your attention, why would you watch me? You know, if I'm really a bad guy and I don't want to be talking to you and I don't want to have any interaction with you, why would I expect you to watch me on Tuesday nights? I wouldn't. So we give back as much as they watch. But yeah, you seem to understand that that's your audience and that you don't want to alienate them. But at some point, it's got to be Come difficult to not be able to sit down and have a meal with people always coming up to you. The difficult time is when I'm going to be off the air. You know, eventually this is only part-time. This is my part-time job. I want to give back as much as I can because I get it. My wife is a huge celebrity follower. You know, when we go to LA or New York, she's always following celebrities. So, you know, and I see how nice they are to them, to, to her. And the only thing I can give back to my viewer is that because I'm a real person. You know, when you see me on TV, there's a separation because I'm, but I'm in your living room, I'm in your bedroom, I'm, I'm all over your house. So they have a relationship with me. And the best that I can do is give them the, the, the few minutes of my time to give them the happiness that I can deliver. All right, well, Les Gold, what can we expect next from you? Big, well, the book number, the book is coming, but 100 shows, a 1,000 shows, as, as long as, as True TV and, and Turner Broadcasting picks us up, We'll be on TV because it's, it's a big thrill to be able to do that. But I'm, remember, I'm a pawnbroker that just happens to be on TV. All right, but you're also a great ambassador for your show. You're going out there promoting it, spreading the word. There's a lot of room for growth still? Still. Um, you know, True TV has, has seen an increase in ratings. We want to give them, because of my devotion as, as an employee, um, not just an employer of my employees, but as an employee of True TV, you know, I want to give them the best I can. I don't know how to not give, the, give up the best. All right, you heard it all the way from Detroit. Thank you, brother. Mr. Les Gold, thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. And with Les Gold, I'm Lee Hawkins. We'll see you next time. is that the audience thinks that I'm either a member of the family or a good friend. <laughs> and so they welcome me into their homes and allow me to be with them on the couch and they're very comfortable with me.
we involve the fans in our product, they feel like they help create this, help design it. And I think that's the case with our, our jewelry, our, our home, bedding, and, and that everything is, that we do. 